Yeah, hey, look at that. Look at, look at that. Look at that little live button up there, man. I'm looking at it on my mm. phone. I see it on my phone and everything, man. I think Ooh, this is really. live again. It has been a couple of weeks. I, I I think the people may have forgotten about us. You think they forgot about us? I don't know. No, nah, man. No way. <laughs> that can't be. Can it? No. Can't be. I think I just... See, maybe that's the key. Maybe I, I, I just shared it on my phone. Maybe that's the key to have my phone up and... There you go. And just share directly on my phone there, man. Maybe maybe that's what I should do. As you can so, see, folks, we're still uh, IT in here in the Mad Men sphere. Yeah. One day we're gonna have like a production budget, and man, we're gonna have like a studio. We have like producers in the background talking to us well, in our IB, you know. That's right. And they're gonna be, you know, it can be three, two, one. We got a studio audience, you know. Hey, welcome everybody, welcome back, and welcome back that's to right. the latest episode. So um, no doubt, man. Hey. In case you don't know, I am Kirk M. Samuels. And I am Jason B. Kendrick. And we are the mad men of masculinity, baby. That's right. We're just real men having real conversations for you. See, we're going to do that. When we have a studio audience, we're going to do that for you. For you. This is gonna, that's going to be our intro when we do that for you, man. Y'all y'all didn't know this was just practice for, for prime time. Oh, we're now, warming now up, man. We're we warming up, dude. We're we about to, we going to have us a studio audience and everything, man. That's right. Now, I'm telling you, man, we're going you know, to do this thing, man, for reals. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, talk about being for reals. I think uh, on our trend yeah. of uh, taboo topics and such. Dude, um, oh, mm. this is about to get real up in this piece, yes. man. We're yeah, gonna we, to, we're going to do some uh, disclaimers. So, uh, yeah, if you are easily Let, offended, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> let's go ahead and warn everybody. Buckle your seatbelts. Mm -hmm. um, if you're watching this, first of all, like, share, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. That you know, we got to remind everybody. If you are watching this on Facebook, come on over to our uh, Mad Men and Masculinity page. If you're watching this on one of our private pages, then you can comment live and we can see your comments as yes. we're talking here. If you're commenting on one of our personal pages, we'll see it after the fact and we won't yeah. be able to. But, but anyhow, this is real deal stuff. If, if Somebody's going to get offended. Yeah. Yeah. It's somebody's just going to get offended. It's just going to put it out there. You ain't going to like one of us or both of us after this whole thing is over. Pretty much. Okay. Um, yeah, we because we we plan on keeping it real and we plan on you know just uh, just just putting it out there this this go around man and, uh, and and let's do this thing man. Hey, I got a question for you, JBK. Yes, sir, what is it? Are men and women equal? Well, I think the biggest uh, there's a caveat to that because are we talking equal physically? Are we talking equal sociologically or economically or you know, I, I think that's what this discussion go, tends to go off the rails for most people because you say equal and then well, that gets translated into whatever their form or subject of preference goes into. Yes, man, that's, uh, you know, man, it, it's a it's a it's a touchy it's a it's a touchy, uh, touchy topic, man. And, uh, you know, because I think, you know, I think a lot of people have triggers around it and I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of social triggers going on and all that kind of stuff. I take my glasses off, man. I'm gonna keep it real up in there. You go. Um, but uh, but yeah, man. I think um, you know, I, I think we should start off this conversation, this discussion. First of all, that you don't have to agree with us. We don't always agree to you know with each other, but this is just our opinion. Whoever you are, all right. But I think in terms of answering the question, are men and women equal? I think. I think we would serve ourselves well if we started off with some kind of fundamental, foundational, almost um, assumptions or definitions or whatever you want to call it. And 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 for me, it, it comes down to kind of two words. Um, there's equality and equity. And you and I have talked. We texted about this and all that kind of stuff. We know this ain't no surprise where we're going. On, but <clears throat> equality and equity. So I think if we were to if we were to break this down, could we? Could we, for the sake of this discussion, frame it whereas equality, I think maybe, equality is about sameness. Mm -hmm. Equity is more about value mm -hmm. <clears throat> in terms of, you know, equity in terms of value. Like, you know, do I have access to the same things? Am I worth like uh, worth the same and, and, and that as opposed to 
equality, which is just, okay, everything is exactly, you know, the same across the board. And I think that's where we get into some hookups. I mean, what do you think about the, those definitions? Is that all or you think? Well, I mean, yeah, I even put a little uh, picture up to, to, to preview this discussion because of that, because equality puts everybody on the same scale, on the same level. But it doesn't take in their personal needs, whether, you know, their strengths and weaknesses, their their likes and dislikes, different things like that. It's just like you all get the same and that's it. Uh, you you only have this right here, no matter whether you need, you know, more steps because you're shorter or, you know, more food because you're bigger or whatever. It's, it's just that, you know, equal thing, like everybody gets the same. Mm -hmm. And that tends to leave those that are disenfranchised or or that have challenges out because mm -hmm. they may, they may not be enough for them. And I think the, the, the picture I added to this as the preview was a good illustration, you know, mm -hmm. and it just uses a, a simple illustration of height against a fence, you know, equality, mm -hmm. everybody gets a box. So the tall guys taller, the, the medium sized guys, even a little bit taller than the short guy is still behind the wall. Mm -hmm. Equity doles it out to, so now they're all, can see over the wall. They all have what they need so they can be at that at that equal space. But mm -hmm. when it comes to men and women, I think especially part of the battle of sexes going on now is the the difference between equality and equity. Because a lot of what we get flack about is when we talk about the a lot of the feminist stuff and them them wanting equality. Yeah. And that's that's fine. Everybody gets equal choice. However, what are what are your actual needs? Are you actually looking at yourself as a female or me looking at myself as a man and saying, well, what are my actual needs? Mm -hmm. What do I need? What are the things that are, because we have different, not only do I have different needs, we have different wants, we have different likes. I was watching a uh, Jordan Peterson thing uh, today, kind of boning up for this because that he's, he's kind of the crown prince of, of this information. And uh, there's a thing about uh, STEM schools, you know, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Mm -hmm. In elementary school and even in high school, most of the time it's 50-50 mathematics. There's 50% women, 50% men are equal as far as mathematical skill. Mm -hmm. Once you get into college, then it's 85% men, 50% women, or some, something around there. And that's mm -hmm. because of preference. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of ladies can be good at mathematics, but go, their preference is, oh, I don't want to do that, or I don't want right. to do engineering. And that's right. where one of the things that it's even almost uh, nature specific or even biologically specific, specific because even in chimpanzees, like for a lot of ladies are more, you know, the feminine is more relationship oriented. Mm -hmm. so it's about people and things and men are more um, object oriented. So we like our cars, our motorcycles and things like that. And even with the chimpanzees, they gave cars and things and dolls and the mm -hmm. females would get the dolls and the, the boys would get the the cars and so it's just mm -hmm. those differences where i don't think equality addresses those things but equity does mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think you know yeah I, I think we we get ourselves in trouble when we try to focus on the sameness in terms of you know in terms of uh, are, are we equal i mean i think you know i have three daughters and a son okay i love them all I love them all the same, but I mean, I love them all to the same, but different. I love them all with, with the value being all the same, but I don't love them exactly the same. I, I, I treat my son differently because he's a boy. Well, he's a man now. I mean, uh -huh. um, I treat him different because he's a male. Uh, I look at my daughters differently because they're female. And, and I think, you know, especially anybody that has kids know that you can love each and every kid completely uniquely and completely holistically and completely you'll give your life for them. But at the same time, you love them differently. And so, you know, and, and to that point, you know, my son, I, he's a man now. I consider him a man. He is a man. Um, but he and I will never be equal because I'm his father. Like, dude, I got a 30 year head start on you. Right. And I'm your father. So, you know, the moment you think that that we are quote unquote equal you know all right you know i holler at you you know you know call me on the weekend you know then you have your own place you got your own whatever and yeah. so i think you know i think from a parental perspective you know we get ourselves in trouble even from as parents 
And this kind of it does lead into the bigger conversation. I'm trying to frame it in a way that other people might understand it. But, um, you know, we get ourselves in a situation where we hold our kids to a level of equality with us. We want them to be, you know, the same as us. And it doesn't work that way. And the relationships are the same exact way. It's just like in between men and women, we're not the same. And we need to recognize that we're not the same. And we need to appreciate the differences in each other and be able to love and exist and, and appreciate the polarity understand that it's a polarity that creates the strength, the magnetism, um, and, and it's not the, it's not the sameness. Right. And I think that's where we kind of wanted to go with this because a lot of what we talk about in men's issues, I mean, we talk about nice guy syndrome, superwoman syndrome. We talk about these different things that have been kind of predicated on the absence of the father figure in the home, which, I mean, that started especially after World War II, but even prior to that, it really started. But not having that father figure in the home. And now in a lot of, there are a lot of those out there that are wanting to to separate men and women, trying to separate us because we mm-hmm. technically don't need each other. And that yeah. gets really into that equality space of where you're not thinking big picture was, you know I mean? I can say that I'm, you know, I'm an island to myself because I live alone and I don't need anybody shopping for me and this and that, but that's a very narrow viewpoint because I didn't put the groceries in the store. I didn't deliver the stuff. All I did was go and pick it up. I mean. All, we're 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 in a system together because we need each other as a system. And when we start looking in, in this equality versus equity way, we we miss a lot of times the big picture. Because yeah, mm-hmm. maybe you don't need a man in your life right now, or I don't need a woman in my life right now, and I can be happy on my own. But we still need each other. And there's and getting into that polarity thing when you think I don't need another person. I mean, historically. <laughs> It has been a team effort. You know, you need, it takes a village to raise a kid. You know, it, it takes, I, I was talking to a friend uh, yesterday about this where, you know, yeah, he could be just fine on his own, but because of his, his family and his kids, he knows he can't do it alone. His wife mm-hmm. knows she can't do it alone. And yeah. so they, they, they have their own uh, tasks. They have, they have their jobs and they support each other. So yeah. I think a lot of times we miss the big picture when we start going, oh, well, I don't need that or I don't need that or, you know, just give me everything equally and I'll be fine. But yeah, we kind of miss that big picture perspective. Yeah. And, you know, this is one of those quite this is one of those conversations that could go on forever, man. And, uh, uh-huh. you know, hopefully we'll, we'll try to keep it fairly yeah, contained. But we could sure. we could pigeon off on a whole lot of different directions. But yeah. I think in terms of um, um, in terms of of just the relationship and the polarity, man, it, it's like, you know, once we realize the appreciation of that, um, is when you know we can we can actually recognize strengths and i'm going to say weaknesses yeah. strength and whatever you consider to be the opposite of strengths we can recognize that and we can you know and we can lean into it i mean we can lean into that you know the fact is i don't have eyes in the back of my head so you know if somebody can have my back and face the other way then i have 360 vision right so we appreciate that, man. You know that that can be that can be a strength to the relationship and not um, not a hindrance to it. Yeah, I think just the whole concept of polarity, and that's something we we talked about. I don't know how many times because you need that masculine feminine dynamic of polarity in a sexual relationship to, to create the intense mm-hmm. attraction. And when we start ignoring those things, or we're not actively figuring out where my polarity is, where my partner's polarity is, or how do we create the polarity that where a lot of this this strife and relationships is coming from because we're not appreciating each other for our strengths and weaknesses and, and, and maybe not even taking up the our job as it right. were because a lot of times I mean I've talked to some guys, you know, they're not even sure what their jobs are anymore. Like they've right. been trained to to give the, the women in their lives mm-hmm. everything they want. Then they give the woman in their lives everything they want and they aren't happy with it because they're not being that masculine polarity that they want. They're being yeah. more of that submissive beta kind of you know, subservient polarity, which at a core level doesn't make us happy. And I think that's why a lot of the, the nice guys and beta guys are, are unhappy as well, because they've forgotten what it means to, to lead, to be the masculine, to, to create the boundaries and, and the container. And so they don't feel like they're in their purpose either. And so if we're not acknowledging our differences, our strengths and our purposes, like, you know, this is my job, that's your job, then, then we're both lost in that way. Yeah, yeah. And I think, man, I think, you know, again, I, I think um, sometimes, you know, unfortunately, we've had a, you know, a patriarchal kind of society. And, and I think women have been kind of shut, uh, uh, cut short in a whole lot of ways in terms of the history of our country. 
I mean, that can go for a lot of minority groups, but, um, you know, but I think the, the call for, um, you know, the call for sameness can get us in trouble in terms of, you know, in terms of that's not, I don't think that's what you want. I don't, I don't think we want, relationally speaking, I don't think we want to be the same. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think that's something that we should even strive for. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think when we, when it's about being the same, then now we have like this whole argument with, let's say, uh, transgender people competing in sports. And now you have a lot of female sports, you know, even girls sports in high schools are dominated by, you know, people that, that are transgender and, 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 uh, and I know that's touchy for a lot of people as well. And obviously this is not an, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the issue of being transgender. I'm talking about the whole notion of, of, of sameness in terms of, I want every, I want access to everything. I want to be treated exactly the same or whatever you want to call it. I, I just think, you know, I think when we can appreciate the differences, then we can strive in those differences. Yeah. Well, I mean, to that point, I mean, when, when we don't look at our own, the actuality of who we are, as yeah. men and as women, we don't look at just the physicality and our makeup and just our how how we're wired differently. If we, yeah. if we look at the don't if we try to ignore those things, then and what's interesting is you know there's a lot of proof out there nowadays, and when we do ignore those things, it causes a greater divide. Mm-hmm. I mean, the Scandinavian countries are, are probably the most equality based countries as far as a lot of the rulings and things that they put together, and it's created a bigger divide mm-hmm. with men and women. And then you look at things like the military that there used to be gender norming mm-hmm. because men were stronger, just physically stronger. And so a lot of the ladies were, we don't want, we want it to be equal. Mm-hmm. So we, we want to be, have the same tests as the men. We don't think it's fair that they have to, for gender norming. And so yeah. they gave them that. And then 60 or 80% of the ladies failed the, the test Yeah, because it's not a, it's not a matter of, you know, this is unfair or fair or not. It, it's a matter of reality and, and actually looking at what are my strengths and weaknesses. Men are just, typically physically stronger they may Mm -hmm. not be as mentally strong or as emotionally strong yeah and that's that what is the reality what what are where are you at and what is your reality and taking responsibility and and accepting that yeah a lot of times that equality negates those things that's why the equity mindset at least takes that into consideration yeah um you know but yeah to your point it's like you know Physically, we're, we're different. Structurally, we're different. Our bone density is different. You know, muscle mass is different. Um, and that, all that's on the physical la- realm. But um, we're different well, emotionally and mentally. But on the emotional, yeah, on the emotional realm, I mean, you know, guess what? Men can't have babies. <laughs> we can't, you know, womb a baby. Like, you know, we can't deliver a baby. And for most men, that's okay. <laughs> like we're not, we ain't arguing for that. Like we accept that, and that is completely okay. Um, and so you know, and, and I think that, and I bring that up because that's physical, but that's also emotional. If you ever been in a room when a baby is born, man, that is emotional, man. That's like spiritual. I mean, that's like my goodness, man. That is that is powerful. And so, um, and so you know, I think, um, I think. Uh, you know, I think we we ought to do ourselves. I mean, we we serve ourselves well when we just accept the fact and honor the fact that we're different and, and emotionally and relationship wise. You know, just just let that be and let that be okay. Yeah, I mean, there's certain tendencies, jobs, purposes for the masculine and the feminine, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of times what what was going on now is that we're moving away from those natural tendencies. Yeah. And, and I, that's where a lot of the separation and a lot of the unhappiness is. I mean, I was reading something just the other day where in the first time in recorded history, as far as they could tell, women are more, are more unhappy after uh, in their lives because they're kind of outside the their, the normal gender roles, which is what they're fighting against. And I get that. They want to be equal. The, 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 the idea of the patriarchy, which is sometimes a dangerous term because it just lumps all men and the whole system together instead of looking at the the reality of, of certain things because a lot of the beneficial things that have come along were because men were doing those for, for their families you know that's what we do we, we 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 build for our families we create for our families and so just to say oh because the patriarchy all this stuff is bad it, it, it's too 
too simplistic, but yeah, you know, look, looking at those things, it's just like, okay, well, results, you know I mean? It's, it's one of the things I, I used to hate, but it makes the older I get, the more I love it. But you know, results sometimes ugly, but always fair, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's, it, sometimes it's not nice, but what are the results? What are you getting from mm -hmm. this? Are, are you happily married? Are you fulfilled in your life and your relationships? If not, yeah. why not? Yeah. Yeah. And man, you know, I, I, again, I, I think, um, you know, I think culturally speaking, relationally speaking, there are some things that men need that generally speaking on a, on an emotional and spiritual level, women don't necessarily need and vice versa. Um, you know, you sent me a great video about the whole idea of containment and that kind of stuff. And, you know, they're just, yeah, there's some fundamental things that, that, that I think, you know, I think we do need that are different and we should recognize and accept the fact that we need different stuff and not try to be, you know, the same. I think when men try to be more feminine, we give up our gift of masculinity. And I think when women try to be more masculine, they give up their gift of femininity. And, and, and that, you know, doesn't serve the other person. Well, if you're giving up something that's inherently you, um, whoever you are, um, that that's a gift that, that you have that you're not able to offer. And I think that's where a lot of the unhappiness and the depression and a lot of the, the strife is going on now is because we we've moved away from our natural tendencies. And I know it's it's it always starts an argument because you're like, you know, we get those. Well, I shouldn't have to be that way just because I'm in this body. And it's like, well, mm -hmm. there are because we're in these bodies, we have right. these tendencies. You know, masculine right. energy has an aggressive tendency. It's, you know, creates more testosterone is more physically strong. And when we as men do not adapt more of that natural masculinity and we we're less physically strong we're we're less focused we're we're more usually depressed and we become betas and we don't lead and and, and create the containment or the containers that, that create those healthy systems and so <clears throat> i think it just comes down to to it's not even so much an argument but it's just like what what it, what is like what is the reality yeah. Are you in a female body? Are you in a male body? That's the reality. If you want to transition that, that's fine. But where did you start from? Right. You know, mm -hmm. and I think the, the biggest, it, it's one of those things that's like, I don't want to start a whole firestorm of argument, but it's like in the past 30 years, especially we, we've, we've gotten to this point where now as men, just being masculine is almost considered bad, which pushes yeah. us mm -hmm. towards that more nice guy thing of, well, I got and then, of course, you know, single moms are, are raising men and, and raising boys and without a healthy masculine influence. Right. They're not sure what being a man is. And so yeah. it's, you know, precipitating this problem of now a lot of ladies are upset because they can't find a good alpha man or a good this, you know, what they're looking for is that, that alpha masculine guy. Right. You know, but that's <clears throat> comes along with the, you know, it's almost like we're creating our own issues. Yeah. You know, yeah. as, as as beta men, we're not finding them the women that are submissive and and, and uh, easygoing and, and loving and caring because they're right. too busy in their masculine running businesses and right. And I think we're having to acknowledge our own stake in the game. We can't we can no longer play the victim and go, oh well, it's my dad's fault or my mom's fault because I was raped by my mom, so I, I'm a nice guy. It's like no, <laughs> that was then. Now yeah. it's your turn to to take the reins and become who you really are and to, to bring those things out. But when we are constantly blaming the other or looking at society or this or that, yeah. that, that takes you away from your own inner power. Right. Yeah, man. You know, I like I, I just, um, you know, I just think and I see it over and over again. You know, if you're, you know, if you're if you're if you're a heterosexual female, for example, and you so in other words you 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 date men um or you're romantically attracted to men but you want a man that's not in natural ways that men are <laughs> then you're creating a situation where it's, it's a cognitive dissonance it's mm -hmm. like you know you want something that you're never going to find you know you want something that you know because uh, a guy can present you know we can present a certain way for a while and then at some point, the real us is going to come out probably, you know, sideways. <laughs> yeah. Sooner rather than later. But yeah. at some point, it's going to come out. And yeah. so, you know, I mean, I, I just think in um, us as men, you know, we need to recognize that, 
you know, that if we're looking for, if we're a heterosexual man and we're looking for a woman that is just like a dude, <laughs> that's like one of your boys. I mean, you can find a woman that's cool and that, you know, can hang out and maybe even like to do, you know, some of the same, you know, activities or, or interests and that kind of stuff. But if it's just like, man, I just, I just wanted to be like my boys. Well, that's why you got your boys. Yeah. You know, put that, you're a guy, you can compartmentalize, put that over there. And then you have this over here. And so, you know, when you even brought up the whole idea of submission, you know, mm -hmm. submission is not a bad thing. Submission is a submission is a strength. Yeah. Um, sometimes the strongest thing you can do is submit. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, mutual submission is extremely powerful when you both kind of submit to the needs of the other. And in, in that when I wake up in the morning, my one of my goals and objectives is to advance your needs of the day. And if both people roll over in the morning to the middle of the bed and, and look at each other and think that, then you know, then you got somebody that has your back that that probably has some gifts that you don't have, some strengths that you don't have, and somebody that can look out for you, and somebody that's willing to submit those gifts to you. Um, man, it's a it's a it can be a very powerful thing, I think. Yeah, I mean, look at humility. I mean, humility is just it's not thinking of less of yourself, but it's thinking of yourself less. And when you have that other partner, and even back to the point of polarity. I, I see a lot of ladies now and it's in, you know, I'm all for the strong women and the alpha females and, and you know, creating the business and stuff. But then when mm -hmm. you're in that masculine alpha state and you're looking for an, a masculine alpha man, he's not going to want to be with an alpha woman. He's going to mm -hmm. be with a submissive, you know, woman. So we, it, you know, we, creating the polarity means like if you're an alpha female or an alpha male, you're going to get the, that submissive or that, um, there was another word, but I, I don't like submissive all the time just because of the, the connotations, but basically that's that, that submissive partner. So if you're, you know, more masculine, you're going to want to have that more feminine partner and vice versa. And that's where the polarity comes from. <laughs> right. But, you know, again, I mean, man, you know, I think, you know, I think that's, man, this is actually a good, a good kind of narrowing in point of how we have in our culture. Um, we have a bias against the idea of submission because I, I mean, I think on both genders, uh, just the whole idea, because I think that our idea of submission goes, it goes against, um, our desire for sameness where we shouldn't, our goal or desire shouldn't be sameness. Right. Um, you know, I, I believe in chivalry, right. And so you know, it, all the notions that go along with chivalry don't involve us being the same. If I'm opening the door for you, you know, who's submitting to who and who has the strength to and who's being served and, and you know, who's, you know, who's in, in what role kind of thing. And so I think just even our idea, our, our problems with the idea of submission goes right into the fact that, that I want to be the same. Uh, I want, I want to be, uh, I want equity. Yeah. I want to be valued, but guess what? When I am, when I am valued, I feel valuable. And now that I feel valuable, I offer that value back to somebody else so that they can feel valuable. Yeah. That brings up a great point. Cause I mean, in, in that example, especially like holding the door or even in my family, you're, you're, you're submitting, you're basically submitting to each other or surrendering to each other. Yeah, because, you you know, if I'm opening open the door for my lady, she's surrendering to me, open the door and I'm surrendering to her by holding the door. And it's like we're surrendering to our natural roles. So are, are we I mean, it's, it's that personal question you have to ask yourself, are, are you fighting against your own natural nature because of some ideology you've adopted or are you going to surrender to your natural nature and maybe find that natural polarity, that natural purpose and and in your place. We're all looking for a place. We're all looking for yeah. our purpose. And, and that can look so many different ways, but is it going to be found in equality or, or is it going to be found in equity? It's going to be found identifying your natural strengths and weaknesses, your natural likes and dislikes and personality traits and, and working with those instead of denying those. And even to that point, if I'm opening the door for somebody, you know, it's not that she can't, Right. It's that I I'm lifting her up to I'm, I'm giving her the equity to 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 have the value of not even having to worry about something like opening the door. 
Like I'm, 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 if, if I can't provide nothing else today, I can provide you one less thing to do, which is open that door. I submit to my, I submit, I submit to, to you when I, when I plan a date night, you know, when I, when I, well, all of those kinds of things, like I am, I'm giving you one less thing to do because I value you, not because you can or not because you're inadequate or not because whatever it's be, it's, it's a way of serving. It's a way of serving to make so that you can see over that fence, however far that is, you know? And so I think there, that's, there's power in that. Yeah. I think that's two good points, right? You made right there of, you know, it's, it's a contribution, it's an equal and, 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 and an equal contribution and an equal surrendering. We're both giving mm-hmm. and we're both receiving. We're both surrendering to, to, because I mean, you can't give without somebody receiving and vice versa. So if we don't surrender to that, surrender to the giving. And, you know, and there's so many <laughs> blogs out there and videos and articles about, yeah. you know, the hypergamy of this and, and you know, ladies want to top 10% and, and 80% of guys on dating apps are considered unattractive by, and they've done the studies and stuff. And so it's like, you know, we can get into all those different things, but it just really comes down to, are you giving as much as you're receiving? Are you surrendering mm-hmm. to the relationship? Are you surrendering to your natural state? Are you surrendering to who you are and acknowledging yeah. that? Because that's yeah. where the equity comes from. You, mm-hmm. Nobody can can give you equity or give you what you need if you're not acknowledging your needs. If you're not right, like right. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to receive that. That's the thing. You can't be a good giver until you can be a good receiver. And so you got to be able to, when you value yourself, then you value other people valuing you. Right. And then when you when you know that you value yourself, then you understand that you have value to offer to somebody else. And I think if you come across somebody that doesn't value themselves to receive from you a sense of value or worth, thereby they can't give you any kind of value back. Bye, Felicia. Yeah. I mean, you know, that that's a great that's a great kind of red line of like, OK, this this ain't for me. This, yeah. this you know, but you got to be able to receive that. Yeah, it goes both ways too. Like, okay, you have your list of of deal breakers, and you have your list of desires, and have the things that you want in a in a person that you, you know, romantic partner. What are you bringing to that person? Right, Is that person gonna want you. And we've done. I mean, one of our first videos was, will will that guy want you or a girl want you? What are you bringing? Yeah, because we can talk all day about what I want and what I need, and these are my deal breakers and stuff. But what are you bringing to that person? What 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 do they get out of the deal? Right. And that's where that equity and it comes in and that self equity. Who am mm-hmm. I? What do I need? What are my needs? Mm-hmm. And what do I bring to the table? What can I provide? Yeah. Yeah, man. I, I mean, and, and so I think in terms of, you know, um, are we the same or are we equal? Um, you know, I, I think, I think we we I think we should we would do ourselves well as far as men versus women, whatever our audience we're speaking to, whether you're a male or a female, if we stop trying to be the same and and make our goal or make our focus more about value. Yeah. What do we what what are, not only valuing ourselves, but what do we bring in terms of value and, and what are we receiving in terms of value from the other person? We should value our differences. We should understand that that <clears throat> polarity is strong. Polarity creates the magnetism. So you got to have a positive and a negative connecting to a positive and a negative, and, and and you 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 appreciate that and you live with that and you value that. <clears throat> and then when you when you value that, you serve that. Like I understand that that I have. I understand that it's easier for me to lift the washing machine because of my density and bone structure and because of whatever. Yeah. I mean, uh, in my case, I mean, I mean, I'm just, I'm dense headed, but you know, (laughs) in a lot of relationships, you know, you know, there are a lot of very strong women out there, but I mean, and you know, yeah, but, but what I'm saying is if I understand that in this situation, I bring value or I bring strength, I bring something to offer. Let me offer that in uh in 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 the in the mindset of of equity in the mindset of if i can't do or if i can do it or i can do it better then i'm going to offer that so that we both win you know because you know when the tide comes in all boats rise right and so you know i think so i think we need to get out of the mindset of us being the same 
that that's where we that's where we that's where we fall short well i mean just for simple reality we're not I right mean, physically we're not mentally we're not you know likes and dislikes we're not now we can be very similar personality wise yeah they've done un unlimited studies on that and and men and women are very much more alike personality wise than, than they are physically and, and um uh biochemically yeah but when we try to try to it's, it's the same sort of thing you know you, when you try to grade on the same scale like you can't uh, grade a fish on its ability to climb a tree because mm -hmm. that's it's a fish it needs to be in the water mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so when you use the same scale and you don't address needs and strengths and weaknesses and things like that then not only are your needs not met but their needs are not met right. we're all lost we're all losing right and we use yeah. equity and we acknowledge the reality and one of the things i see today that it's it's exacerbating is all get out is we look at the one percent the one to five percent those, those those you know the, the the fringe drawlers and go well they do it i should be able to do it mm -hmm. you know you, there are female mma fighters that i know that i've trained with that are more aggressive stronger mm -hmm. and more physical than i am mm -hmm. but i don't judge what my needs on them right you know being present with who i am and what i need and, and same for you guys is if we look at the extremes and then judge ourselves off the extremes, we're already losing because yeah. that's not who we are. That doesn't yeah. judge our need. Yeah. And so, I mean, you know, when it comes to our, our masculinity as men, you know, man, I, sometimes I feel like, you know, I feel like we get dinged um, for, for just the idea of masculinity. Now I know I'm, again, I'm recognizing that over the years, the idea of masculinity, the idea of manhood has been abused. I mean, I, I get that. And I get that that a lot of women have a, a core wound that was put there by a man at some point in their life. But guess what? A lot of men, probably most men have a core wound that was put there by a man as well. And so um, and so I feel like as, as men, sometimes we get, you know, um, we get deemed for the for the idea that uh, you know that, that somehow our masculinity is bad and somehow yeah. our masculinity is whatever. Now, yeah, chauvin chauvinism, yeah, that's terrible. You know, and just you know, just um, uh, somebody being subservient to somebody. If you feel like that as a man, like if you feel like a woman needs to be subservient to you, um, then you need to fix some issue within you. Um, as a man, though, if you find that 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 feminine, uh, 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 a submissive heart in a woman is somehow attractive to you. I don't think you should feel bad about that because I think there, you know, I think, you know, a secret that a lot of women don't get is man, just that, that idea of, and again, I'm not talking submission as a weakness. I'm talking submission as a strength submission as a, you know, every man was contained within a woman at one point in time. <laughs> every single one of us right and so we find comfort in the in the in the in the 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 inner of a woman in the inner being of a woman and so when a woman a woman offers that to us that that inner softness there's no there's no hard womb uh, of a of a mom you know i mean a, a mom that that has a baby inside that womb is never hard until it's time to give birth and then it tightens up as a muscle and i mean that's way off on a whole nother tangent but point being that softness that she might offer is captivating to men i mean and so i don't think we should feel bad about being drawn to that if that's something that we're drawn to you know as as men um you know but i think sometimes we do get dinged for that like you know and i i kind of like the way i am and i kind of like the you know the just the ways that I'm, I'm made up and i shouldn't feel bad about that well i mean you just look at uh the past 20 five 30 years i mean it has actually become part of the the schooling system to try to train the masculinity the aggressiveness the natural you know testosterone of boys out to make mm -hmm. them more more you know more easy to get along with or more easy to deal with to, you know trying to trying to get that that natural masculinity out of them so they naturally think it's wrong and then they grow up thinking that being masculine is wrong and then yeah. you got a lot of upset women who can't find a man to lead yeah and so then they take the leading role and then if they do find a man who wants to lead they don't know how to surrender to that and, and cooperate with that and so then it's just a fight when all they want 
And all we all we want is to find somebody to work with and work with our natural strengths, our natural masculinity. But if you can't step back and go, hey, lead. Right. You know, if you want to be the leader, then you lead. But if you're going to be the leader, then you're going to get the submissive man. Yeah. And vice versa. And so yeah. we, we've kind of done this to ourselves. And now it's up to us to take responsibility and go, well, I mean, because this is coming from my own experience of I grew up as a nice guy. I grew up as that beta male. Mm-hmm. And it's taken me years to get to that point of going, oh, OK, wait. Oh, oh no, it's OK to be a guy. It's yeah. OK to be a man. It's OK to have guy friends. It's OK to do guy things. It's OK to be masculine. Yeah. And. <clears throat> how we're doing this channel so that we can yeah. educate other guys and women and to that point i mean most of you ladies that watch this channel we're not really talking to you you know right. this stuff right yeah a lot of the, the you know maybe if you want to share this with some of your girlfriends that might need to hear it yeah but i know a lot of our, our, our loyal followers you don't need to hear this you know this already yeah yeah i mean and and the point is yeah that our masculinity is not bad mm-hmm. and and to make masculinity safe for us men and also to make masculinity safe for women, I think, to have these kind of conversations so that women can hear. And I mean, it makes us that, that we're, we're not all Neanderthals and we're not all, you know, out here trying to take advantage of and trying to consume women. I mean, we're not cons- you and us doing this platform. We're not consuming anybody. You know, we're, we're just offering a, kind of a window into this. And so, you know, I think, you know, I think us um, I think us just appreciating that and us you know, recognizing that specifically in the area of manhood or masculinity, that it it can be relatively safe. Like there are, you know, guys out here that don't fit the stereotypes that somebody might have from a previous experience, you know, with a man or, or, or whatever, not that we're perfect and got it all figured out. But what I'm saying is, you know, again, a lot of us, and I would say 51 out of a hundred human beings in America have some kind of a wound that was put there by a man. And so, you know, for us to to come here and to have these conversations, hopefully we can ex- we can make it more acceptable for us as men to have gifts and wheat and strengths and flaws and all that kind of stuff and to just be guys and let that be okay. Yeah, and ladies, I mean, we do this for the guys, but we you know, we've all said it, I don't know how many times the majority of our audience is you ladies encourage your men to be men encourage them to be with with other men so that they can gain that natural masculinity so then they become the leader but then you also have to accept that right surrender to that and, and become cooperative with that so it's always a choice and that's one of the things uh we were talking about it before me and Kirk that it's like you know we should just do a video about you know tell men to get off dating sites and, and, and quit yeah. chasing because yeah. it's just not working right now but you know, it's like that's not our natural instinct. We want to right. chase. We want to. Yeah. We want to. You know, find those those the our our feminine other half. Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. encourage your men to have other friends. Encourage them, and that's one thing too. Mm-hmm. I, was, I was listening to something earlier today about if you guys if you get into a relationship and stop doing all the things that made your partner attracted to you, mm-hmm. they're not going to be attracted to you anymore. Even if right. you do it out of a loving mm-hmm. way, like, oh, I don't want to go to the gym. I want to stay home with my honey. Okay, once. Maybe right. twice, but right. if that becomes a habit, then now you're you're no longer physically attractive. So you right. need to get back in the gym. So, you know, what, whatever you do to attract your 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 mate, keep doing those things, and then maybe include them in it, or you know, encourage them to keep doing the things that they were doing. This <laughs> this getting together and and becoming complacent thing is right. murder in relationships. You know, and even to that point, you know, I was just talking about men and masculinity. I mean, it should be okay for women to be feminine. I mean, it should be okay for yeah. you know women to not feel like you have to be masculine or you got to be strong, or you got to be in charge, you got to be you know whatever it is that the world is telling you you have to be today as a woman. And I don't know those things, and I'm not a woman, and I'm like I'm not getting all those subliminal messages. But I do know a lot of women, and you know I thought about this the other day that you know quite honestly guys like you and me probably interact with more women than most women do. Yeah. I mean, not only do I have a lot of female friends that are associates and acquaintances, and I know a lot of people that are in, you know, certain cert- different circles and, you know, but I got a mom, I got two ex-wives, I got three daughters, <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, women that I have dated, women that I am, da- I mean, you know, I, I've been around a lot of women. And like I said, I interact with a lot of women. I've coached women. 
Um, you know, women still reach out to me with questions. I had one say, man, I should have called you last night. I was in this small group and we were talking about this and that, and this and that. And you would have had great. I mean, so I have a lot of like strictly platonic, you know, female friends. And so, you know, I, so I say that to say that, you know, I hear from a lot of women that, you know, that they don't like kind of the, the, the pigeonhole that culture is kind of putting them in these days where it feels like they got to be men. It feels like they got to, you know, they got to be the boss babe and they got to be running things and they got to be in the gym getting all swole and, you know, and they got to do this and they got to do that. But then they also got to do this and they also got to do that. And, you know, and it can just be daunting. You know, you look on social media. I swear there are more women posting pictures of them getting swole in the mirror at the gym than guys. Yeah. You know, there's nothing wrong with exercise and all and be healthy and all that kind of stuff. But it used to be the stereotype that men were in the gym, like flexing and all this other kind of stuff. And and, you know, making sure everybody needed to know. And so anyhow, I'm, I'm off on a tangent, but I feel like as much as we as much as, you know, as much as it should be OK for men to be men, it should also be OK for women to be women and to not have it all figured out and to sometimes need to cry and to need to be held and to, to you know, to to need to the feeling of being contained and, and safe and and have doors open and to be pretty and whatever she whatever that thing is that's in her that 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 wants to express itself through the avenue of femininity it should be okay for her to be that and us men should not expect the woman in our lives you know to want to be like our boys i mean or 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 to put the pressures on women that that i feel like maybe women feel like today that they got to be everything successful in everything and they got to chase everything and they got to be the alpha and all that kind of stuff. And man, I'm telling you, as a man, as a 40 now eight year old man, an alpha woman is just not attractive to me. I mean, it's just not, dude. And I'm if that offends you, lady, I'm sorry. But the alpha, you got to be dominant, and domineering and all that kind of stuff. That is just not attractive to men, at least of a certain age, maybe a little boy that has mommy issues. But I don't need a mom. I got a mom, man. And she is dope. I, I don't need that. And so it is just not, a, I'm just way off on a tangent right now, but I just feel like. Dude, no, it, it fits right in. Cause I mean, if, if, if you're a dude trying to have your woman be like a dude, there's no polarity. Absolutely. And then all these alpha women who are looking for an alpha male, he doesn't want you. Yeah, Two absolutely. alphas don't make a right. No, you got to no, have no, polarity. No, no, no. Absolutely. And so and, if you're and, an alpha woman, you're going to get a beta man. And most alpha women, most masculinated women that I know, resent the fact that they are that way mm -hmm. most of the boss babes that i know most of the alpha chicks that i know want a man that they're tired of holding that weight man and they want a man that can help carry some that can lead them and that can all that kind of stuff and then problem is a lot of them get so in-depth in it that they don't want to let it go when that man does come along that's a whole nother oprah no, but is. but point being that most of the ones that i know that are in that space resent the fact that they're in that space and they they have a secretly submissive side to them that they really want to let out but they can't let it out because they don't feel safe because they've been holding on to that masculinity gene for so long man and i'm telling you specifically like i said men of a certain age do not find that attractive if you walk into the room as a as a as an alpha chick I'm okay with just kind of sitting back and you know yeah okay I'll hey, what's up, dude? I'll, how you doing yeah I'll, you know, <laughs> but i'm not impressed by that I'm just not. I don't have mommy issues. I mean, what I, what I find interesting about that too, and when we're you know, let's go right off tangent. When you get into that masculine energy, you take on those masculine traits, and now as a masculine feminine, masculine woman, now you feel being vulnerable because that's a part of that masculinity. We fear that that weakness. We fear showing weakness. We fear being vulnerable, and now you've taken on that trait. But part of your nature <clears throat> is to be soft and vulnerable and accepting and cooperative. So yeah. <laughs> you, you've adopted these things. So the, and that's, that's part and parcel of nice guy syndrome. And then the antithesis or the answer to nice guy syndrome, superwoman syndrome. But the, the answer to both is healthy masculinity. Healthy yeah. masculinity sets a precedent and a space for healthy femininity. Yeah. And if we're not, if, if we think each other are equal and we're the same, we're trying to do the same things. We're not going to find the equity in that natural yeah. balance. Yeah. We've, we're out of balance people. 
Yeah. Out of balance. We need to find their balance I, again. And I'm telling you, and I know we're I know we're on this point where we're circling the runway. We need to bring this thing in. I get that, but I, I think you know I think there's been an absence of healthy masculinity for so long that femininity has had to fill that void or fill that vacuum, and femininity has had to become that because there wasn't that to begin with in terms of existing. And so yes, as we when we as men can become <clears throat> you know, more of who we are and who we were made to be in, in not the equality, but the equity and not the sameness, but the value. And we can value that and we can become that and we can heal our wounds and all that kind of stuff. Then, then, then women don't have to be that whole thing. Then it's up to women now. Then we can sit back and say, okay, lady, ladies, you can let that go because I'm not that, you know, because I, I did my work because I am, in that space and then leave it up to them to figure that whole thing out. But I mean, I think there's a lot of men these days that have done more work than a lot of women that I know. And it's like, I'm working with him, but you know, but girlfriend, you need to do some work too, because we get him right. You still jacked up, yeah. you know? So, so you got to get your poop in a group, you know, before you can want him to start to whatever you fix him. And all of a sudden, yeah, you know, what you didn't like about him before, now you like something different about him, you know, now. And it's like every failed relationship in your life has something to do with you. You're the common denominator. So anyhow, man, we are. Woo -wee. You got me on fire now. Oh, we, I mean, I, I got so much more. I mean, we, we're we going to have to do a part two on this. One. Oh, I'm man, sorry, we, can, we can. I'm telling you. We can, yeah. we can go because everything you say inspires something else. And I want to talk about it. And I'm like, if we go down that rabbit hole, it's yeah. never going to end. So we're going to we're going we're gonna, to. <laughs> Line up I'm, on the I'm runway. Kinda, I'm kind of fired up right now, dude. I'm kind of <laughs> like, dude. I'm serious. The more I think about it, man, yeah. every masculinated woman woman that I know resents the fact that she is carrying the weight of masculinity. And if she does, if she's not resenting it, either publicly or privately, she she's delusional. But dude, every single one that I know that I've had these conversations with, every single one of them hates it that I know, maybe there's some that I don't know, but every single one that I've had this conversation with, man, they, they resent it, man. They, they like hate the fact that they carry that. And man, I'm sorry. I'm a woosa, woosa, woosa. All right, here we go. Breathe. Let me take a drink. Take a drink. So, so I know, let's land okay. this thing, man. Yeah, so, let's land this thing. so we were, we're talking about healthy masculinity being the answer. And I know that's going to raise a lot of tail feathers on some of you ladies thinking, well, what about us? But it's the degradation of the healthy masculine that's led to all these issues. Mm -hmm. It's led to you having to be more less masculine. It's led to all these men being nice guys and betas and, and not being the leaders and, and the supportive masculine that you need. And so we're calling out to you and putting this out there to you to look at yourself and the men in your life. Right. Can you support them being healthy? Can you look at yourself? Because there is one thing that is true and most of us don't want to look at it, but there is an inherent value to women. Mm -hmm. and inherit disvaluation of men. Men's lives do not mean as much as women. And so in some cases, if the man is actually doing his work, which means he probably is because he doesn't sense a, a natural value of his being this, he's probably working on himself one way or another, or he's just given up. Mm -hmm. So I, if you have that natural valuation, if you feel like you're valuable because you are feminine or you, because you are a woman, you may not be looking at yourself like you need to work on yourself. Yeah. And that yeah. may be an issue and it, cause it takes two to tango. We both need to be working on ourselves. And, and I've seen it in so many personal development communities, one partner starts working on themselves. It's not long before they're gone unless mm -hmm. the other partner steps up, starts working on themselves too. Right. And if we start working together, yeah. I mean, the vulnerability, intimacy, communication between a man and a woman, if we're talking heterosexual or you know, whatever relationship you're in, it still takes vulnerability, communication, intimacy. Yeah. And that comes from working together. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I think, man, we, I think men and women are equal in value. I don't think we're equal in sameness. And I don't, I think we should always be equal in value. I don't think we should ever be equal in sameness. I don't it's ever want to, wanna, I don't ever want to give birth. <laughs> <laughs> if we had guys are, had to give birth, we would have been instinct a long time ago. Women are the cradle of civilization. Like that is a gift that you all have. And I'm so glad you do because if, Men had to give birth, it'd be like one baby. Yeah. Um, if we couldn't plant it and grow it, we it wouldn't happen. It. And so, you know, and so I think, you know, I think we should seek 
and we should seek to be equal in value to one another, but I don't think we should seek to be equal in sameness to one another. And we should, we should value our gifts, our differences, and we should offer those to one another in mutual submission of our differences. Yeah. And ladies, if, if you are not valuing the men in your life as much as you value yourself or your children, <clears throat> where you know there, there there's uh, incongruence there, and that's yeah. part of part of the issue yeah. is that most men feel yeah. feel devalued. Yeah, and like that, yeah. that that was it Match.com or Plenty of Fish, one of the dating apps did a study. They did a survey. Eighty percent of the men on there, the women said they were they found eighty percent of them unattractive. Mm. That's that's not a good statistic. Yeah, and yeah. that means we're being devalued. <clears throat> yeah, and so if you're not valuing yourself or valuing your partner. What do you got? Yeah. I mean, we're not the same, but we have the same value. We need yeah. to be valued equally. If you're talking yeah. about equality, we need to have equal value. Absolutely. And so it goes without saying, Jenny Land, we see you out there. We see Love your you. comments. Thank Love you. Love you, sister. You know, I Eddie, appreciate you. I appreciate, you know, you and your boys too. I see you. I yeah. see you. I see you specifically, Jenny Land. I see you. I see you doing your thing. I see you doing your work. I see you yeah. doing your gift and, and doing everything that you're doing. And, you're and my shout out to your boy, Jalen. Oh, that's yeah. We we spent. He's a man now. Spent, the two of us spent 24 hours with him. We yeah. we got him. And I'm, so, I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm sorry. Let me correct myself. Not your not your boy. Your little man. man your young your man. man. Your man. Boom. All right. We love y'all. Love y'all. Uh, Peace out. I love you, JBK, man. You my love guy, you, brother. Man. Take care, my oh, man. We'll and in the comment section, I put our new Mad Men and Masculinity YouTube page. We need all y'all to subscribe and share. Once we yeah. get a, once we get a hundred subscribers, then we can do all the, the uh, marketing stuff for it and change Ooh. the name and make it easier to find. But Ooh. we need your support. We need your help. We need your love. Yes. Yeah. We're not gonna get prime time without you, baby. Oh, we need a studio audience for this joint, man. We need a studio <laughs> audience, man. We, we hey, man. Get, you know, we gonna get us a little band over on the side and everything, man. We need us a band. <laughs> so. Yes. Uh, all right. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We love y'all. Right. We love y'all. Wow.